Hey everyone, welcome back to Las Vegas. theCUBE is on our fourth day of covering AWS reInvent live from the Venetian Expo Center. There, this week has been amazing. We've created a ton of content, as you know, because you've been watching. But there's been north of 55,000 people here, hundreds of thousands online. We've had amazing conversations across the AWS ecosystem. Lisa Martin, Paul Gillen. Paul, what's your kind of take on day four of the conference? It's still well, highly packed. Oh, it's still, there's lots of people here. Yep. <laughs> Unusual for the final day of a conference. I think uh, Werner uh, Fulkes, uh, as I, if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, kicked things off today when he talked about, uh, about as asymmetry and how the world is you know, asymmetric. We build symmetric software because it's convenient to do so, but asymmetric software actually scales and evolves much better. And I think that, that was a conversation starter for a lot of what people are talking about here today, which is how the cloud changes the way we think about building software. Absolutely and, uh, does. Our, our next guest, uh, Holger Mueller, is, is uh, that's one of his key areas of focus. And um, Holger, welcome, thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. What did you take away from the keynote this morning? Well, how do you feel on the final day of the marathon, right? We're like at 23, 24 miles, we hit the wall yesterday, right? We so. are going <laughs> strong, Holger. And of course, yeah. you guys, we can either talk about business transformation with cloud or the World Cup. Oh, the we World could do Cup. both. Hands down, World Cup. <laughs> Germany's out, I'm unbiased now, they just got eliminated. Well, What's like your take for the US? Spain what do you think? What will the US do against Netherlands tomorrow? Uh, What's your win. forecast? They're US will win? win? What do you one. say? 2-1? I, I'm, I'm optimistic, but realistic. So. Three? Three? No, I, think, I think Netherlands. Netherlands will win? Okay, I, I'll root for the US. 3-1 okay. for we'll the US, for the US. Okay. optimistic. Okay, I like that. Hope for the best Tomorrow you'll see what we How much soccer experts we are. If your prediction was right. Yeah, yeah, oh, yours was right, right? So, cool. No, but the event, I think, the event is great to have 50,000 people. Biggest event of the year, again, right? Not yet the 70,000 we had in 2019, but it's great to have the energy. I've never seen the show floor going all the way down like I this, right? Either. I've never seen that. I think it's a record. Often vendors get the space here, and uh, they have their keynote area, and their entertainment area, and the yeah. food area, and then there's an exposition, right? This is packed. In fact, you don't see the big empty booths that you exactly. often see. Oh, no. Exactly, no, the white spaces and so on, no. which is right. a good thing. So lots of energy, which is great. And today is, of course, the developer day, like we said before. Werner Vogels is a rock star in the developer community, right? Revered, um, uh, visionary on what has been built, right? And he's becoming a little professorial, is my feeling, right? He had these moments before, too, when he was justifying how uh, AWS moved off the Oracle database, about the importance of data warehouses and structures and why DynamoDB is better and so on, but he had a large part of this, too. And that's a common thread across the keynotes, right? Adam Silipsky talking about Antarctica, right? Scott against Amundsen <laughs> and what went wrong. He didn't tell us, by the way, which often the tech vendors forget. Uh, uh, Scott banked on technology. He had motorized sleds, which failed after three miles. So <laughs> that's not the story to tell the technology. Let everything down. Everybody went back to ponies and horses uh, and, and dogs. Well, maybe it goes back to yeah. asynchronous uh, yeah. behavior, the, and, the and way of nature. And yesterday, Swami talking about the bridges. Right, the root bridges, right? right. So, so how could Werner pick up with his video at the beginning yeah. and then talk about space and other things? So I think it's important to educate about event-based architecture, right? And we see this massive transformation. Modern software has to be event-based, right? Because that's how things work and we didn't think like this before. I see this massive transformation in my other research area, not the platforms, but the HR space, where payrolls are being rebuilt completely. And payroll used to be one of the three peaks of ERP, right? You would size your ERP machine before the cloud to financial close, to run the payroll and to do an MRP manufacturing run if you're manufacturing. God forbid you run those three at the same time. Your machine wouldn't be able to do that, right? So it was like start the engine, start the boosters, we are running payroll. And now the modern payroll designs like you see from ADP or from Ceridian, they're taking every payroll relevant event. You check in, time-wise, right? You go over time, you take a day of vacation and right away they trigger and run the payroll so it's up to date for you, up to date for you. Which in this economy is super important because we have more gig workers, we have more contractors, we have employees who are leaving suddenly, right? The great resignation which is happening. So from that perspective, it's the modern way of building software. So it's great to see um, Vander showing that. The dirty little secrets though is, that is more efficient software for the cloud platform vendor too. Takes less resources, gets less committed things, so it's a much more scalable architecture. You can move the events, you can work asynchronously much better. And the biggest showcase, right? What's the biggest transactional showcase for an eventually consistent asynchronous transactional application? I know it's a mouthful, but we are at Amazon, AWS, Amazon, right? You buy something on Amazon, they tell you it's going to come tomorrow. Yep. They don't know it's going to come tomorrow by that time because it's not transactionally consistent, right? Which is making every ERP vendor who lives in transactional world having nightmares, of course. <laughs> right? but, but for them, it's like, 
yes, we have the delivery to promise, the promise to do that, right? But they come back to you and say, sorry, we couldn't make it, delivery didn't work, and so on, it's going to be a new day. We're out of the product, right? So these kind of event-based asynchronous things are more and more what's going to scale around the world. It's going to be efficient for everybody. It's going to be better customer experience, better employee experience, ultimately better user experience. It's going to be better for the enterprise to build, but you have to learn to build it. So the big announcement was the builder environment to build better eventful applications from today. Talk about, this is a, the first reInvent, well actually, I'm sorry, it's the second reInvent right. under Adam Solipsky. Adam Solipsky, But his yep. first year, right. we're hearing a lot of momentum. What, what's your takeaway with what he delivered, with the direction Amazon is going, their vision? Yeah, I think um, compared to the Jesse times, right, we didn't see the hockey stick slide, right? with the number of innovations and releases that was done in 2019 too, right? So I think it's a more pedestrian pace which ultimately is good for everybody uh, because it means that when software, is go slow, software vendors go slower, they do less width, but more depth, yeah. and depth is what customers need. So Amazon's building more on the depth side, which is good news. I also think, and that's not official, right, but Adam Solipsky came from Tableau, right? So yeah. he's a BI analytics guy. So it's no surprise we have three data lake offerings, right? Security data lake, we have a healthcare data lake, and we have a supply chain data lake, right? Where all, again, the ERP vendors who mentioned them are saying, oh my God, Amazon's coming to supply chain. But it's actually data lakes, which is an interesting part. But I, I think it's not a surprise that someone who comes heavily out of the analytics BI world on its offering side, if I was pitching internally to, to him, maybe I'd do something which he's familiar with. And I think that's what we see in the major announcement of his keynote on uh, Tuesday. Uh, I mean, speaking of, of uh, analytics, uh, one of the big announcements early on was uh, Amazon is trying to bridge the gap between uh, between RDA, between Aurora and, yeah. uh, and uh, Redshift, right. uh, and uh, setting up for continuous pipelines, continuous integration, right. seems to be a trend that uh, that is uh, common to all database players. I mean, Oracle is doing the same mm -hmm. thing, SAP is doing the same thing, uh, MariaDB. Uh, do you see the distinction between transactional and analytical databases going away? It's, it's coming together, right? Certainly coming together from that perspective, but there's a fundamental different starting point, right? And uh, well, the big idea part, right? The, the universal database, which does everything for you in one system, whereas the suite of specialized databases, right? Oracle is on the classic Oracle database in the universal database camp. On the other side, you have Amazon, which built a database. This is one of the first few Amazon reinvents, it's my 10th, where there was no new database announced. No. Right? So it was always add another one. I think they have enough. It's a great approach, they have enough, right? So it's a great approach to build something quick, which Amazon is all about. It's not so great when customers want to leverage things, and ultimately, which I think with Solipsky, AWS is waking up to, the enterprise saying, I have all this different database, and what is in them matters to me. Yeah. So how can I get this better? So no surprise, between the two most popular databases, Aurora and RDS, they're bringing together the data with some out of the box parts. I think it's kind of like silly when Swami's saying, hey, no ETL. Right? Yeah. There shouldn't be an ETL from the same vendor, right? There should be data pipes from that perspective mm -hmm. anyway. So it looks like on the overall value proposition database side, AWS is moving closer to the universal database on the, on the Oracle side, right? Because if you lift, of course, the universal database under the hood, you see, well, there's a different database there, different part there, you do something there, you have to configure stuff, which is also the case, but it's one part of it, right? So. With that shift, talk about the value that's going to be in it for customers, regardless of industry. Well, the, the value for customers is great because when software vendors or platform vendors go in depth, you get more functionality. You get more maturity, you get easier ways of setting up the whole things, you get more ways of maintaining things, and you ultimately get lower TCO to build them, which is super important for enterprise because here, this is the developer cloud, right? Developers love AWS. Developers are scarce, expensive. Uh, might not be one to work for you, right? So developer velocity, getting more done with the same amount of developers, getting less done, less developers getting more done, is super crucial, super important. So this is all good news for enterprise who banking on AWS and then providing them more efficiency, more automation out of the box. Some of your customer conversations this week, talk to us about some of the feedback. What's the, gen what's the common denominator amongst customers right now? Customers are excited. First of all, like first event again in person, large, right? People can travel, people meet each other, meet in person. Uh, they have a good handle around the complexity, which used to be a huge challenge in the past because people say, do I do this? I know so many CXOs are saying, yeah, I want to build, say, something in IoT with AWS. The first reference, build it like this. The next reference, build it completely different. The third one, build it completely different again. So now I'm doubting if my team has the skills to build things successfully, because will they be smart enough like your teams? Because there's no repetitiveness. And that repetitiveness is going to be very important for AWS to come up with some higher packaging and version numbers, right? But customers like the depth message, they like that things are working better together. 
Um, they're not missing the big announcement, right? One of the traditional things of AWS would be, and they made it even proud, as the system Jesse was saying, was, we look at the IT spend and we see something which is like high margin for us and not served well and we announce something there, right? So quick side. Uh, workspaces where all exams where AWS went after traditional IT spend and had an offering. We haven't had this in 2019, we didn't have them in 2020 last year and didn't have it now. So something is changing on the AWS yet, it's a little bit too early to figure out what, but they're not chewing off as many big things as they used in the past. Right. Yeah. Uh, did you get the sense, Keith Townsend from the CTO advisor was on yeah. earlier, and he, he said uh, he's been to many uh, reinvents as you have, and he said that he got the sense that this is uh, Amazon's chance to do a victory lap, as he called it. That uh, this is a way for Amazon to reinforce their yeah. leadership cloud and, and really kind of establish that nobody can come close to them, nobody can compete with them. I, do I don't think sense? that's at all, I mean, I love Keith, he's a great guy, but I don't think that's the mindset at all, right? So, I mean, Jesse was always saying it's still the morning of the day in the cloud, right? They're far away from being done, they're obsessed over being right. Uh, they do more work with analysts if we think we got something right and I like the passion from that perspective. So I think Amazon is far from being complacent. And the area which is their biggest bit, right? The biggest, the only thing where Amazon truly has thundered, it always thundered, is the AI space, right? So 2018, Werner Vogels, who was doing more technical stuff, said, oh, this is all about linear regression, right? And Amazon didn't start to put algorithms on silicon, right? And they have a three, four trail and they didn't announce anything new here behind Google, who's been doing this for much, much longer with the TPU platform. So but they they're have keenly now, aware. Yep. They now have three, or they have their own, two of their own hardware platforms for AI. They support right. the, Intel, uh, the Intel platform. They seem to be catching up in that area. I, I, it's very hard to catch up on hardware, right? Because there's release cycles, right? And, and this the volume, they're just talking about the largest models that we have right now to do, which are language models. And Google is just doing a side note of saying, oh, we supported 50 less or 30 less, not little spoken languages, which I've never even heard of because they're underbanked and under-supported, and here's a language model, right? And I think it's all about a little bit the organizational DNA of a company. I'm a strong believer in that. And it, you have to remember, Amazon comes, AWS comes from the retail side. Yeah. Right? Their rollout of data centers follows their retail strategy, open secret, right? But the same thing is the scale of the AI is very, very different than if you take a look over at Google where it is makes sense of the internet. Right? The scale right away, a solution right. which is a good solution for some of the DNA of AWS, also Microsoft Azure, is, is good there, has no chance to even get off the ship off the bat uh, at Google, right? And this lead is with Google and it's not getting smaller, right? We didn't hear anything, I mean, so much focus on data. Why do they focus so much on data? Because data is the first step for AI. If AWS was doing a victory lab, data would have been done. They would own data, right? They would have a competitor to BigQuery Omni from the Google side to get data from the different clouds. There's crickets on that topic, right? So I think they know that they're, they're catching up on the AI side, but it's really, really hard. It's not like in software you can't acquire someone. They could acquire NVIDIA, not, right? Not a core game, but that's not a yeah. good idea, right? So you can't, there's no shortcuts on the hardware side. As much as I'm a software guy and love software and don't like hardware, it's always a pain, right? There's no shortcuts there. And there's nothing which I think, yes, a new, uh, new Atanium uh, instance, of course, certainly, but they're not catching up. The distance is the same. Yeah. One of the things, is funny, uh, one of our guests, I think it was Tuesday, it was, it was right after Adam's keynote, sure. said that Adam Slipsky stood up and on stage and talked about data for yeah. 52 minutes. But, it was time, 52 minutes. But, Huge emphasis on that. One of the things that, that Adam said to John Furrier when they were able to sit yeah. down a week or so ago in an event preview was that CIOs and CEOs are not coming to Adam to talk about technology, they want to talk about transformation, they want to talk about sure. business yes. transformation. Yes. Talk to me in our last couple of minutes about what CEOs and CIOs are coming to you saying, Holger, help us figure this out, we have to transform the right. business. So, so we advise, um, I'm going to quote our friends at Gartner, once the type A company, so we'll use technology aggressively, right? So take everything in your audience with a grain of salt, it's not the followers or the laggards and so on. So for them, it's really the cusp of doing AI. Right? Getting that data together, it has to be in the cloud. We live in the era of infinite computing. Uh, the cloud makes computing infinite, both from a storage, from a compute perspective, from an AI perspective, and then define new business models and create new best practices on top of that. Because in the past, everything was fine out on premise, right? We talked about the EP system in size. Now in the cloud, it's just a business model to say, do I want to have a little more AI? Do I want to run a little more? Will it give me the insight in the business? So that's the transformation that is happening, really. So bringing your data together, this is why conversation data, but not for bringing the data together. There's often a big win of the, for the business for the first time to see the data. AWS 
US is banking on that with the supply chain product as an example, so many disparate systems bring them together, big win for the business. But the win for the business ultimately is when you change the paradigm from the user showing up to do something to software doing stuff for us. Right. Right? We have we too much in this operator paradigm. If the user doesn't show up, doesn't find the click, doesn't find where to go, nothing happens. It can't be done in the 21st century, right? Software has Good to look point. over your shoulder, yeah. understand, run for you, autonomous, self-driving systems. That's what CXOs who are future-looking will be talked to come for to AWS and all the other cloud vendors. Got it. Last question for you. We're making a sizzle reel on Instagram. Yeah. If you had like a phrase like a, or a 30 second pitch that would describe reInvent 2022 and the direction the company's going, what would that elevator pitch say? 30 second pitch? Yeah. All right, just time me. Um, AWS is doing well, is providing more depth, less breath, making things work together is catching up in some areas, has some interesting offerings like uh, the healthcare offering, the security later lake offering, which might change some things in the industry. It's staying the course and it's going strong. That was beautifully said, Holger. Thank you so much for joining Might Paul have been too short. I don't yeah, know. Ten, ten it was perfect. Left over. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Thanks for having me. Perfect appreciate sizzle it. reel. We appreciate your insights, what you're seeing this week and the direction the company is going. We can't wait to see what happens in the next year. You, you Thanks got, for having me. And of course, you've been on so many times. We know we're going to have you back. <laughs> Look forward to it. All Thank right. You. For Holger Muller, Holger Muller and Paul Gillen, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.